So a common question I get on Tetra light is how light is it? Well, it's light enough to do this workout in. So yeah, Tetralite is really light. Again, how light? Light enough to wear on a nice hot summer's day. Now the mobility on these is insane. I could go into a world's greatest stretch. I'm able to get my knees all the way up to my elbows without any risk or feeling of a tear. So leg day approved for sure. Mountain climbers are also no issue. I am currently rocking the Tetralite cargo joggers in a size medium. They're in the sand smoke color and they get the job done. Now, Tetralite or Silverlight? I would have to say that depends. Again, Tetralite will be more of a weight priority. It's the lightest fabric they have to offer. Silverlight will be carrying that antibacterial, antimicrobial uh, property because of the silver ions inside of the fabric. So again, that's something that you're gonna have to weigh yourself. If you were going out afterwards, like let's say you're going to the gym, but then you had some errands to take care of afterwards, I would probably go with silver light just for that reason. Um, uh, especially if you're a heavy sweater, that odor fighting, bacterial fighting technology in there does go a distance in terms of what it does for you and being able to commute or go out and about your day. Um, that being said, Tetra light, again, because it's so light, um, I haven't had any issues with the odor, at least no one's fucking told me about it, but I myself can say that I know what mildew smells like and I know what, you know, sweaty clothes. I think we all know what a gym locker room smells like, but uh, I haven't had any issues with Tetralite and again, being able to go out afterwards in it. Yeah, between the two, if you're a heavy sweater and odor, uh, anti-odor is a priority of yours, Silver Light slash Silver Plus. If you are concerned with weight, mobility, Tetralite. Now, quite a few of you asked for a closer look at this Tetralite full zip jacket and here it is. If you ever want to see anything in closer detail, leave a comment below or reach out to me on Instagram and I'll be sure to put it up here on the channel. These videos are for you guys. So, closer look at this jacket, I was like, first off, what the hell do I wear it for? Me personally, I wear it for morning runs or those days where it's like chillier in the morning, but it tends to warm up. Since this is such a light jacket, there's pretty much next to no insulation value, but just enough to keep you warm after a workout when you're sweating, like in your body still warm or if you're in like a, again, a humid environment and you just need a thin layer for that extra insulation, I guess. But me personally, I wear this for morning runs or workouts and late evenings when I need a layer that'll, again, keep me warm uh, when the air is cooling down. So this is the sand smoke colorway. I got in a size medium. Uh, a couple things about this jacket. First off is reflective. The lining here along the shoulders is reflective. The ASRV lettering spaced out is reflective and along the hood and back, the trademark, all of that is reflective. So that'll give you some extra high vis if you're running later in the evening or again, those early mornings. Two cinch cords on the hood. That is intuitively designed in there for us runners or athletes um, to cinch the hood tight when you're not wearing it or when you are wearing it, you could adjust the cords and that will prevent the hood from bouncing or falling off. And again, that's a little nuisance that you wouldn't even think about like solving, especially like while running, you kind of just zone it out. But the fact that they thought of that and it just one less thing that annoys you, um, it's super nice, super nice detail there. Um, so yeah, that hood does cinch shut so that when you're running, it doesn't bounce around. Or if you run with a hat on or the hood on and you're warming up, you could also cinch it tight so your hood doesn't fall off. Now coming down to the sleeves, thumb holes here so that again, when you're wearing this in the mornings, you can keep your hands warm and there are no pockets at the bottom, okay? Now, no pockets, some people might see that as a con. I see it as a pro and the reason for that, with this Tetralite material, you want it to be as lightweight as possible. By adding pockets, not only are you adding weight to the jacket, but it's also gonna drag or stretch the fabric down a lot. 
This is a super, you guys know this Tetra Light or Tetra is a four way stretch. So it's super stretchy. And again, by adding pockets in here, if you put anything in this, like such as an iPhone or a wallet, um, depending on how heavy your wallet is, it's just gonna weigh down the jacket and lengthen it. So I see it as a pro. How do you combat this? If you have the matching shorts with the liner, you could put it into the side liner um, and keep your phone just out of the way. And because it's compressive, your phone's not gonna bounce around. Um, or just don't run with your phone, don't work out with your phone, have it off to the side. Uh, there's a couple drawbacks there, but you might as well get the shorts with the liner in there. That way you can keep your device on you. Now, it would be biased of me to say that Tetra Light is the best fabric that they have to offer. But again, it comes down to your personal lifestyle, training and usage. Uh, now, if you're based out of somewhere colder, you can see I'm sweating, um, but if you guys live somewhere colder, Tetra Light would still have its benefit for those summer uh, months that you do have where it does warm up just a little bit. Um, it's nice to have a thinner jacket for those days or a thinner material, I should say, for those days, but weigh your own gym routine, your own lifestyle, and then you can make the best judgment call from there. Uh, being someone who runs a lot and who's often out in the morning, early in the morning, um, this was a go-to for sure. And you guys can see exactly why. <laughs> What's up, brother? Those last Fucking time skated. Fuck, like, <laughs> like three years ago, dog. And I ate shit. And you ate shit. And I ate shit. Indeed. I think I don't miss about skating. What? Your right foot or whatever foot you're planning on the board, it starts like like hurting. Oh, like aching? Yeah. Right now, I mean, that's the view, guys. You see that? Can you see that? I love it, see. Thank you, Tim. See? Shit. Give us a Vic tour. Just we got, like. We got bay systems over there. You can get a bay. We need a bay. We got a dole over there. If you want bananas. Bananas? <laughs> wait, wait, where? Oh, there. Dole. And then you got G2 Ocean. If you want Gatorade, you just go on that ship. <laughs> that's a cute one. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> what happened back there? There was people and downhill and I was just like, I'm gonna, we're just gonna run this. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, I've shown the push-up uh, pull-up pyramid routine before, but if this is your first time seeing it, basically we perform a pyramid set of pull-ups and push-ups until we reach a top set and then we go back down. In today's case, we're going in increments of two. So for every pull-up we do, or every two pull-ups we do, we do double the amount of push-ups. So today we're building up to 10. So it would be two, four, six, eight, 10. And then we work our way back down, 10, eight, six, four, two. So we do pull-ups, two, four, six, eight, 10, 10, eight, six, four, two. For simplicity, for your push-ups, you just double the amount of pull-ups. It's just a nice, fun, challenging routine um, to get you started. If you guys are looking for somewhere to start, uh, getting the basics down for body weight, exercise. I don't do any of that crazy shit, the handstands, the planches and all that. I want to though, that's a goal of mine. But for those of you guys just working on your fitness, yeah, it'll build, it'll build a nice uh, upper body physique as well. But that's a routine that I got started on and to this day it still challenges me, especially once you start adding extra weight on. The way to add variety, you can either keep it the same with pull-ups and regular push-ups or what I do on the way back down, you'll see it. I'll actually switch my pull-ups to chin-ups on the way back down and regular push-ups to diamonds for a bit more emphasis on the triceps. So that's something you can do, push-ups, pull-ups on the way up and then chin-ups and diamond push-ups on the way down. I don't know, make it your own. You guys could switch it up however you want as long as the template of a pull and a push is still there. Now. 
Oh, horrible. Do that clip. Oh, okay. <laughs>